Welcome back. We have disabled the weapons and uh, communication systems so we can talk to the Enterprise again. We also got the guards on our side so things are looking up. But we still need to prevent the destruction of the Federation and that's kind of important I guess. So let's get a move on with that. The Enterprise is also still um, trapped in that tractor beam, so we probably need to go to special projects, take care of that, and hope that that beastie that's in there will not get in our way. There's also Docking Bay 1 that we haven't been to yet, so let's check that out first. Surrender or die. Wait, you're supposed to be on our side. Hasn't Commander Command talked to you lately? Yeah, I guess they didn't get the memo? Can I have five minutes to think about it? <laughs> I doubt it. We surrender. Wait, you're supposed to be on our side. Let's tell Hasn't him that. Commander Command. He is a traitor. Our loyalty is to Dr. Bradell. Great. Spock, fire. Great. Yeah, no, that's not uh, helpful that they are not following their captain's orders. Okay, we surrender. Great. Okay, we surrender. Hmm, maybe we surrender, we can get a chance to do something less violent than just shooting them. Let's get their weapons. Seven with one ball. An exaggeration, Doctor. Come on, you two. All right, that worked out well. Looked like th there's a shuttle here. Let's see what we can find. The floor. Still a floor. Good to know. Doing its important job of keeping us all up, I guess. An unconscious Vardane guard. An unconscious Vardane guard. No, I'm pretty sure that's a phaser. This looks like an Anolbi class light personal transport, similar to the shuttlecraft aboard Federation starships. This seems pointless. But it's the outer door, I guess. An invisible force field protects the docking bay from the hazards of the final frontier. That's good then. The door into the docking bay. This monitors the effectiveness of the cosmic ray filter along the shuttle bay. Important to monitor, I guess? This panel warns of imminent disaster. This seems pointless. I hope it is not warning about that right now. This monitors the effectiveness of the magnetic lock that seals the shuttle bay. These controls open and close the shuttle bay doors. A communication panel. We probably still don't need to use the internal communications. What about these things? This controls the force field that protects the transport and docking bays. This controls the atmosphere within the transport and docking bays. This controls the force field that... Interesting. Spock notes the transparent aluminum doors with passive interest. James Kirk looks for a way to make certain his ship is safe. Not sure we can do that from here. Dr. McCoy wonders how many more casualties are going to occur on this mission, then wishes he didn't think about such things. I wish I knew what to do. Captain, I am quite willing to offer some suggestions, if you wish. Observations, Mr. Spock. We need to shut down the tractor beam that is currently holding the Enterprise. Until the ship is freed, our options are limited. Our chief priority is to find the reason for the Holocaust that was reported by the Alexander and stop it from occurring. All right, Spock's just giving his regular um, generic advice. Ask Spock for advice. Maybe if you read the lines in his pointy ears, you can see the future. That is one of the most irrational statements I have ever heard you make, Doctor. It was a joke, you green-blooded machine of a Vulcan. Unfortunately, Doctor, even by human standards, your sense of humor is erratic at best. Okay. Anything to scan in here? Nothing unusual about that object, Captain. Nothing unusual about that. 
nothing unusual about that object, Captain. I guess not. They require a retina scan, a voice pattern, and a key code. Let me guess, Bradell's. Dr. Bradell would seem to be exhibiting signs of the human emotion, paranoia. That's an understatement. All right, so it seems that this shuttle is only for Dr. Burdell's use, which I guess he would want to use it to escape if we move against him. Which we probably don't want, because that would just leave him free to try something like this again. So we should probably try to stop him from escaping. Well, we can't get into the shuttle bay, I would assume. I am unable to open them, Captain. But maybe we can do something with some of the other controls. Just these two on the left, everything else was just a monitoring panel. Spock, open the outer door. Spock, sabotage the system. Sabotage? Yeah, that's how I pronounce that. It's the uh, Canadian in Shatner coming out there. Spock, open the outer door. That doesn't really seem helpful. Captain, the door is open. Magnetic locks are keeping the transport in place, Captain. I think that only makes it easier for him to escape. Spock, close the outer door. That sounded like it was spliced together from two different takes. Now we want those doors... Captain, we should not risk damaging this equipment. I want to keep those doors closed. And actually... Spock, open the outer door. Spock, sabotage the system. We do want to damage this equipment, because if he can't open the door, then he can't leave. The controls are no longer functioning, Captain. How about, um, this control? Spock, remove the atmosphere. Spock, sabotage the system. I guess he could still get out if he can find a way to blast through the doors. Spock, remove the atmosphere. Sabotaging this, though, doesn't really seem to do much in and of itself. However, if we remove the atmosphere first, that would make it much harder to get in there if he can't restore it. The atmosphere has been pumped out. Magnetic locks are keeping the transport in place, Captain. Spock, restore the atmosphere. Spock, sabotage the system. The controls are no longer functioning, Captain. That should do it. And indeed, I think if you don't do this, then um, not only does it cost you points, but yes, Burdell will escape at the end of this mission. Anyway, we still need to set the Enterprise free, and then we need to check out Burdell's quarters as well, both of which are over here. Let's check out special projects first, but... Um, Save new game. Replace previous game. We did do something about the uh, force fields there, and there was a kind of dangerous looking animal in there. Jim, look out! That's not good. Can we stun him? Fascinating. Burdell has made it resistant to tissue disruption. Yes. Fascinating is not the word I would use there. And he killed us. USS Alexander. We have returned from the future. In eight days, the United Federation of Planets will be completely destroyed. A new... And yes, if you die during this mission, it loops... Oh my God. Captain's locks up. It loops you back to the beginning, because it is a time loop after all. And you could play again from here. Although I think if you do... Um, you cannot actually get full score. Even though there's no way Starfleet could know that that's what happened. But, you know, game mechanics, I guess. 
So yeah, you want to reload when that happens. Not that we'd want to start over anyway. It looks like stunning the poor creature does not work. Jim, look out! <laughs> I like how that just says RAR, and then it sounds like that. Unfortunately, we will have to kill it. There is no alternative. Too bad. It's not his fault. Alright, the computer force field is also down, however, so we should be able to get to it now. This is the control for the special weapon that is holding the Enterprise. The force field that prevented our access to the controls has been neutralized. All right, Spock. Turn it off. Captain, I have deactivated the tractor beam. The Enterprise is now free. Do they have anything to say about that? We await your success, Captain. Keep us posted. Not really. But it is important that you do that. Both for points and the success of the mission. This chair seems to be placed in such a way that you could not possibly reach the keyboard if you sat in it. Anyway. The only thing left to do is to stop that doomsday device, and now we've seen firsthand what happens if uh, it is used, so... We better get to it. And since Burdell's quarters are the only place in the station we haven't searched yet, it has to be there. And we know the code. The game didn't tell us what the code was, but that doesn't matter. Well, it appears all of those misspent years playing chess have finally been put to good use, Mr. Spock. We can now enter Bradell's quarters. Misspent years, Captain. Definitely, Spock. You could have been spending time studying or playing baseball with family and friends. Vulcans do not play baseball, Doctor. Nor do many humans in this century. Let's go. I want to have a few words with my old friend, Dr. Bradell. Yeah, from what I remember uh, Cisco saying, baseball had fallen pretty much entirely out of favor by the time of the 24th century, anyway. Except when Starfleet plays it against some Vulcans. Anyway, let's see what awaits us inside these quarters. So, you managed to elude our security. I'll have their heads. It's over, Burdell. Surrender peacefully, and we'll guarantee you a fair trial. I will not submit to a trial by a tribunal of chattering apes. We are the Vardane. Lesser species have no right to judge us. Your experiment is over, Burdell. Morality transcends the differences in species, Burdell. You don't honestly think you can defy the three of us, do you, Burdell? Your ex morality right, this transcends one. the differences in species, Burdell. Morality. It is an invention designed to make lesser people feel superior. The universe is full of moral people, and for the most part they are dead wood. People who are preoccupied with morality never make history. You always did love to lecture, Kirk. You'll be the most self-righteous corpse in the galaxy. I don't think so. Let's stun him. Fortunately, all these people are always really slow on the draw. Even McCoy didn't get stunned this time. Good thing, too, because I don't think he was using stun setting. The floor. Still the floor. Is Burdell. For once in his life, he's not a threat to anyone. Indeed. Is Burdell's bed. Oddly enough, the furniture demonstrates a classical taste that you would not have expected from Bridell. It is an uh, interesting decor, to say the least. Bridell's nightstand. It appears in perfect condition. There is no room for sloppiness in his orderly existence. Okay. A 
shape painting by one of the abstract artists of the Manalagor Decimator School. Odd, you would expect Bradell's taste to be more classical and realistic. I wouldn't expect anything. I don't really know this guy. A painting of the pyramids of 10F2. Um, is that Kirk's head? A dartboard. A very good likeness of James T. Kirk is its chief decoration. It appears so. A vase of red Antarian roses. They have a pleasant aroma. A food replicator. The Journal of E.S. Bridell. That might be useful. This seems pointless. Controls for Burdell's personal computer system. Might also be useful. A door. James Kirk is not in a happy mood right now. He will be soon, I'm sure. McCoy hopes they can finish this mission soon and get out of here. Spock would not admit it, but Burdell has a certain scientific excellence that he finds admirable. Too bad he applies it in the most heinous way possible. Bridell. Such a charming man. Reminds me of a Bonovan camel snake. Let's not insult camel snakes, Bones. Indeed. He is Bridell. Another testimony to your peerless diplomatic skills, Jim. Indeed. It is logical that Bridell would wish for the controls for his experiment to be close at hand. Spock sticking to the mission, as usual. Let's see if we can find those controls. Computer system seems a good option. Captain, there does not seem to be anything indicating that this is the control mechanism. I guess not. How about the food replicator? The device is an ordinary food machine, Captain. Um, the dartboard? There is something hidden behind the dartboard, Captain. Some sort of electronics. A trap? I'm unable to tell, Captain. Aha! Uh -huh. You can kind of see that there's a sliver of grey behind the dartboard there. Let's get that dartboard out of the way. The offending dartboard is removed, revealing a set of controls. Kirk's kind of in the way. This would appear to be the control system for the proto-event weapon. It is already active and preparing to fire when the conditions in the phenomenon are correct, which would be at any moment. It is targeted on Sector 001. Earth! That one-eyed monster plans to destroy Earth! Affirmative, Doctor. I will need Burdell's codes to deactivate it. Did Star Trek ever refer to Earth as Sector 001 until um, the best of both worlds? In next generation? I don't think so. I could be wrong though. I guess we need codes, but might as well try it. Captain, we need to learn the codes before we can attempt to activate the controls. Uh, well, his journal's here, so that might be. You pick up Bradell's journal and the bookmark falls out. This is unusual, Captain. I would not have expected a man like Burdell to rely on a paper record. Who knows, Bob? That does seem weird. And that bookmark got pointed out for a reason, I'm sure. The bookmark is intricately decorated, not too dissimilar from a computer circuit pattern. Interesting. All right, so we got the journal. Bradell's journal. And a bookmark. A computerized bookmark which automatically stores the last page that was read in micro memory. Okay. Just get an ebook reader, seems a lot easier to me. Let's check the journal, see if we can find a code in there. According to this book, Bradell's secret code is 2162. Alright, well that was easy. Although I kind of agree with Spock, it's kind of weird that he would rely on paper for something so important. Anything to say about the dartboard? A dartboard with moving target for a real challenge 
and a phaser-resistant backing used to train security officers to fire their phasers more accurately. Well, it's kind of like the target we saw in the crew quarters then, I guess. What about that bookmark? No, I don't think that's necessary. It said it looked like computer circuitry, so maybe if we scan it... Captain, there's a number coded in base 64. The number is 2,188. Hmm. That sounds interesting. I think that's more likely that that is the real code, and the one in the journal is a decoy. Let's give it a try. And hope we're right, because otherwise... Uh, a lot of people are going to die. I will need the correct code, Captain. We've seen two possible codes, Mr. Spock. 2162. 2188. 2162. 2188. No option to cancel anymore. Let's try it, I guess. I have activated the code circuit. The proto-event weapon is decloaking. I have also managed to deactivate the station's shields and have a clear communications channel to the Enterprise. Broadcast the coordinates, Mr. Spock. Have the Enterprise destroy that weapon. The coordinates have been sent. Scotty, three to beam up. We did it! The Federation is saved! Good thing we rescued the Enterprise first, or they would not have been able to shoot it. That has to be one of the most welcome explosions that anyone will ever see. There is turmoil on the Vardane Council, Captain. The members who supported Bridell's anti-Federation policies have been forced to resign. I expect improved relations between the Federation and Vardane. That's good to hear. Though history shows that suppressed movements like Bredel's have a habit of resurfacing at inconvenient moments. And Bredel is now a Federation prisoner. I hope this will not prove to be a rallying point for those of Ardain who hate the Federation. I've received word that Mr. Shem's application to enter Starfleet Academy has been accepted. He should make a fine officer one day. Captain, I'm receiving a message from the USS Alexander. The Alexander? Temporal paradoxes are most fascinating, aren't they, Mr. Spock? Are you attempting to annoy me, Doctor? On screen. Luke Rayner here. I know we've never met. Uh, yes, of course. We got your signal, and Starfleet has asked us to assist in cleaning up your operation. It's good to have you with us. Better than you could possibly guess. I don't understand, Captain. It's a long story. Come aboard, and I'll tell it to you. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. I am very pleased with your performance. It was a perfect mission, Jim. Your reputation as Starfleet's best starship captain is secure. Kane out. And we saved the Federation, and it was a perfect mission. And thus ends the first episode. The second one is called Sentinel. Hi, Captain. I'm looking forward to taking leave on Nova Atar. The museum there is supposed to be quite excellent. Lots of antique and one-of-a-kind machinery. Commander, are you certain it's not the Kazakhstanian cognac you're looking forward to? Do they make that there, laddie? I don't know. Why, Mr. Scott, I'm surprised at you, not knowing the location of a famous distillery. We invented that brandy, you know. Right. <laughs> of course you did. No, really. We did. No one would ever doubt you, Ensign, however... Sorry to interrupt, Captain, but we have an emergency call from the science vessel Demeter. She's in orbit around Balkos 3. On screen. Captain Kirk. Good to see you're in the area. You have an emergency, Commander Gelman? Well, I'm not sure, actually. Maybe more of a case of better safe than sorry. We're orbiting Balkos 3 to study the Balkosi, a race of people just entering their own Stone Age. We've only been here two days. Already, we've found some unusual data. But just a few minutes ago, during the deep geologic probing phase, we were suddenly scanned. Scanned? I thought the Balkosi were just developing. They are, Captain. And there haven't been any indications of old civilizations until now. The scan was also of extreme power. Following that, we detected a power source coming online. We'll send the coordinates along with all the other information we've gathered. I was a little concerned that we triggered an old defense mechanism. With the amount of information it pulled in its scan, we'd be an easy target. 
I've moved the Demeter to a higher orbit on the far side of the planet. Quite reasonable, Commander. We're on our way. Thank you, Captain. Kirk out. All right. I guess that uh, shore leave will have to wait, Mr. Scott. We have a mystery to deal with. A scan from a Stone Age planet. You may have noticed that the uh, Admiral did not give us a percentage or a numerical score. She just said that it was a perfect mission, which means you got the highest possible score, and you can in fact still confirm that in the Captain's Log. Which shows us that for the first mission, Federation, we have earned four points. Which is the maximum. If we had missed something small, like for example that panel with the gas traps, which I missed when I uh, was originally practicing, then yeah, you get three points. Since you don't get the percentage score, you don't have as clear of an idea of how much you missed. Before it would have been like 98%, so you knew you only missed one thing, but here you don't get told that, so... You just know you don't have everything, you don't know how much you missed. Which is a bit annoying. The missions in this game are also a lot more in-depth, particularly this first one is actually very uh, complicated to get the full score on, because there's so many little things you miss, and if you do things in the wrong order, if you don't get the, the guards on your side, or if you forget to disable the shuttle bay, which you don't really have any reason to go to at all, or to know that you're supposed to do that, and you will miss out on the maximum score, which I guess does improve replayability, but it can also be kind of annoying to figure out what you did wrong. Especially since this is the first mission. The next mission is a little bit easier, so it's better to ramp up. I do really like that that first mission continues the story from the last mission of the previous game. It's a Nice bit of continuity, wrapping up uh, our story with Dr. Burdell, who had very little actual presence in the previous game, other than just showing up, declaring he had built the Enterprise 2, and then blowing up, although apparently not dying. Anyway, we should probably um, look into this mystery that we've been posed. Let's do some uh, research. The planet they were talking about is Balkos. Balkos 3, a planet inhabited by a humanoid race just entering the Stone Age. The Federation science vessel Demeter is currently conducting studies of the planet. And you can see by the arrows on top that there are two entries meeting uh, this search. Balkosi, a humanoid race just entering the Stone Age level of development. The Balkosi inhabit the planet Balkos 3. Preliminary studies suggest that this race is relatively new to the planet and should not have reached this level of development in this short amount of time. Further studies are currently being conducted to explain this situation. Interesting, and the scan suggests that there may be a much more advanced intelligence present. So maybe the Belkosi are being helped. Um, how about... The uh, Demeter, the ship that called us. USS Demeter, a Federation science vessel named after the Greek goddess of agriculture. It is currently under the command of Commander John Gelman and is assigned to scientific research at Balkos 3. How about um, the Commander Gelman? Anything we need to know about him? John Gelman. Starfleet rank commander, current assignment acting captain of the USS Demeter science vessel, currently assigned to research at Balkos 3. Alright, that's interesting. Anything to say, Mr. Spock? I advise referring to the star map and setting a course for Balkos 3, Captain. That sounds like a good idea, and we'll do so in the next video.